Addiction is a condition that results when a person engages in an activity or ingests a substance. That can be pleasurable, but the continuous use or act of which becomes repulsive and interferes with ordinary life responsibilities, such as work, relationships, and health. Um, users, not may be, users may not be aware that their continuous use is um, distracting themselves and others, but others see it. Addictions, when we think of addictions, we often seem think about it as being illegal or something that's bad. But addictions come in a wide variety of things, um, including those that may not seem harmful but are. Real, whether you realize it or not, almost everyone is addicted to one thing or another. When I was younger, cell phones and electronics and television weren't a priority, but they were privileged. So I didn't get a phone until 15 days before my, high, my first year of high school. Um, about three months ago, I came to the conclusion that I was addicted to my phone. Um, yes, this addiction is not as extreme as others, but my phone plays a very big role in my life. And I started, I didn't realize it before, but I was always on my phone, at home, around my family and friends, and in my classes, and during, during school, excuse me. My phone had became a huge distraction in my life. On average, teens in the U.S. spend about nine hours on their phones for their enjoyment. Just take a moment to think about how long nine hours really is. That's more times than, than typical teens get spend sleeping and more times than they spend with their family. <clears throat> Keep in mind these nine hours don't include the time that teens spend um, using their phones for, so for schoolwork and whatnot. Studies show that 78% of teens use their phone, ages 12 to 17 have phones, and more than two thirds have smartphones. China and South Korea have, have uh, came to the conclusion that internet addiction is a public health threat. If you take a look at this slide, it shows that 11% of adults use their phone every few minutes, and 41% use it every few times an hour. You can also see that teens spend 6.3 hours on a cell phone or a smartphone. Three and a half hours either on a television or watching TV or on a computer. On average, teens spend about 17.3 hours out of a 24 hour day on some type of electronic. That leaves you with 6.7 hours left. What else can you do? To, get you, to let your body grow, fully grow, you need about eight hours of sleep. At Los Osos, a regular school day is six hours and 25 minutes long. That's about how long study show teams aren't on their phones. Our smartphones are taking over our lives. I'm a student athlete, so my life is, my life is already very busy. And I have school, homework, softball. My bedtime before I had a phone was around 8.30, but as I got more followers on Twitter or passed a new level on one of the mini games I played, I didn't... I started going to bed around 11, 12, sometimes even 3 in the morning, knowing I had to wake up three hours later to start my new day, but it didn't matter to me in the moment because I was updating my news feed or re clicking retry on one of the games I was playing. NFS 2006, 2006 Sleep in America poll showed that many adolescents have symptoms of a depressed mood on a frequent, if not daily basis, daily basis because of not getting enough sleep. My phone was taking over my life like a drug. I decided to do an experiment on myself. I wanted to see how my life would change if I didn't use my phone for two months. There were a lot of positives and negatives to this, and more than half of teens surveyed said that they couldn't live their, without their phones for a week, and 36% said they couldn't go 10 minutes without checking their phones. I thought I was going to die at the beginning of this experiment. I haven't had my phone for about a month and a half, and I'm still alive. <laughs> there were positives and negatives to this, and one of the, a huge plus for me was being able to be a, a come a lot closer to my family again. I had full conversations without being rude because I was on my phone. Another thing that I saw was that I found an increase in my grades and my overall like my overall intake in what I had learned that day at school. Every day my mom would ask me, "What did you do at school today?" My answer was always nothing. Not because I did nothing that day at school, but because most of the time I wasn't paying attention to any of my classes or to the conversation my mom was wanting to have with me. I found myself less stressed out about school, softball, and my busy life. I found myself getting more sleep and being able to... I found myself getting more sleep and I wasn't so grouchy in the mornings. 
Another thing was that I wasn't on social media, so I wasn't in the loop of what was going on in others' lives. But in the end, I realized that I didn't need their drama in my life anyways. Music is a huge part of my life, so that was one thing I disliked most about not having my phone, is that I can't listen to music throughout my day. But then again, I did have more conversations, meet new people, and I saw new faces. At the end of the day, I go to bed happy and feeling like I actually accomplished something. I'm not saying I'm going to go my whole life without my phone. All I'm saying is that I know what it's like not having a phone, and if I can do it, I think you can too. I decided to continue my experiment until the end of the school year to see how my life is more, can change more and being more aware of what I can, of when the right times to use my phone are. My challenge for you is to ask yourself, what can I be doing right now instead of being on my phone? What can I be seeing? What can I be accomplishing? My, my question that I want you to ask yourself is would I die without my phone? Thank you.